What's up, y'all? It's Tuesday. I'm fired up. Let's go. What is up, gang? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jax, and this is my podcast, Movie Myths and Monsters. All right, I am fired up this morning. <laughs> it all started with some BS from Rolling Stone, and I am fired up. I was like, not really into making this video today it's raining i'm tired it's been gross out for like weeks here but whatever rolling stone dude they got me on one anyways we'll get to that first i want to start with adam's tweets from yesterday and the 18th because the 1mdb trial is coming up fast and not a word to be heard out there in the world let me get this stuff opened up but we got parts eight and nine for the most part that he is giving us here we go part eight who received one mdb stolen billions according to the doj and why the media ignores it nine days before prize michelle's one mdb trial now this is from the 18th so it's a couple days ago we are now Less than a week away from this trial happening. Not a word, not a word out there in the world about it. Sony's purchase of EMI music funded with $107 million in stolen money. Ari Emanuel, Trump's agent. Now I know it's hard to remember, but yes, some time ago, Trump was a TV media personality <laughs> before he decided to be president. And uh, so he would have had an agent and that agent was Ari co-founded rain that was banker on the deal and then we've got tweet number two here hollywood into which billions were laundered by fugitive chinese spy currently hiding in china who also corrupted two white houses if you remember from my videos over the last couple of weeks we are talking about both the obama and trump administration so naturally bought the rights to the story of 1mdb but did they because it appears it was actually china who bought the rights well, ain't that something. Let's expand the screenshots that Adam's giving us here. Sydney Kimmel Entertainment, Hong Kong-based Ivanhoe Merch, China Private Equity Fund takes possession. Sydney Kimmel Entertainment, the independent film finance and production company behind this year's Academy Award, Best Picture nominee, Heller High Water, and Hong Kong-based Ivanhoe Pictures have merged to form SK Global. China-focused private equity fund and prominent investment management company in China, Culture and Entertainment Fund, is taking a substantial equity position in SK Blo Global. Amazing. There it is. Ivanhoe Pictures, Michelle Yeoh, to turn Malaysian finance scandal into movie with billion-dollar whale deal. So they bought the rights to the 1MDB movie, and then she's dealing with Ivanhoe Pictures, which is basically now a Chinese company merged to form SK Global. What do you think is going to happen? There's not going to be no 1MDB movie, not in any type of factual way. Here's the Rain part. Rain, founded by formal, former Goldman Sachs investment banker Joe Ravitch. Okay, we already know Goldman Sachs pled guilty in this whole shenanigan and paid billions of dollars out because of it covered that in my previous videos and here's ari former trump agent ari manuel was considered for white house job after 2016 election amazing u.s government seizure of music publishing assets draws malaysian financiers family <laughs> they even got sting in the police in this thing Consider for a moment the song is now part of a corruption scandal that may hold some importance for U.S. Justice Department's perpetually controversial asset forfeiture program. Oh my God. Stephen Volk, chairman of the board of EMI Group and vice chairman of Citigroup, added, after evaluating all alternatives, we believe that this transaction achieves our objective of maximizing the value of EMI for Citi while providing EMI Music Publishing with a partner in the Sony Consortium that appreciates this wonderful business. The Rain Group. Peter Solomon Company, UBS, and Guggenheim Securities acted as financial advisors for the group. UBS Investment Bank acted as sole leader arrangement with the senior credit facilities. Dude, I mean, just all the things we have been talking about for weeks now. Just so much corruption and involvement and 
craziness across the board, across business, across politics, just all over the place. Let's go to Adam's tweets from yesterday. Boom, part nine. Who received 1MDB stolen billions and why the media ignores it seven days before Pros Michelle's 1MDB trial? Now we're six days. Leonardo DiCaprio got a hundred million dollars in funding for the movie The Wolf of Wall Street, a 9.2 million dollar boss yacht, and a 3.3 million dollar Picasso Marlon Brando 600 thousand dollar Oscar statue and more. All of these things he had to return to the government. Why no media coverage seven days before a tectonic fraud case? Indeed. Sherlock Holmes, the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. Scotland Yard, the dog did nothing in the nighttime. Holmes, that was the curious incident. The dog did not bark because it knew the perpetrator. Let's expand the screenshots. Report, Feds grilled Leonardo DiCaprio on business relationship with international fugitive fraudster. The actor who previously handed over gifts like Marlon Brando's Oscar in a first edition of The Great Gatsby from the outlaw financier Joe Lowe claimed he delegated vetting. Leo surrenders $3.2 million Picasso, $9 million Basquiat to the U.S. government, also the Oscar. Move is related to a stunning embezzlement scandal connected to the One Malaysia Development Burhad Fund, also known as 1MDB. Boom, Leo willingly returned gifted Oscar to federal authorities amid criminal investigation. This is 2017. <laughs> Leo falls victim to international art scandal. Oh, my. Joe Lowe faces new charges in scheme involving Trump. Here we are. U.S. has laid fresh charges against fugitive Joe Lowe, an ex-member of the Fugees, as part of an investigation into the multi-billion dollar 1MDB scandal. Mr. Lowe and Proz Michelle have been accused of running a back-channel campaign to get the then-Trump administration to drop the investigation. 1MDB was an investment fund set up by the Malaysian government. All right. And last one. Feds accused Joe Lowe, Proz, of funneling cash to Obama re-election campaign. Feds have slapped new charges against fugitive Malaysian playboy Joe Lowe, sent for alleged campaign finance violations. Wow. So there you have... Both administrations, all kinds of art dealing that's had to be returned, the laundering of funds through Hollywood movies, the whole kit and caboodle. So now we are six days away from this trial. Most we got was big article like last week that, uh, you know, I did, I did a video on um, that you can go check out after this. If you like, I have done, I don't know, four or five videos now <laughs> surrounding Adam's tweets the whole thing, TMG, Johnny, all the missing money. It's it's a whole circus out there with this thing. So that is the latest on that, of course. Any other developments that should happen to come about, uh, I will cover either in shorts and reels and stuff or videos. It'll, it'll get covered. Don't worry. <laughs> so... Next thing, Rolling Stones BS. Man, these mofos, they are back with yet another woke hit piece of just stupidity. Here it is, C.T. Jones. My latest for Rolling Stone unpacks how and why celebrity cases become cash grabs online. It's just, I find it so amusing that these people who write for publications somehow think that their opinions and what they have to say is more important than what anyone else has to say because they have a job at Rolling Stone, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, whatever the hell it is. It's just a job. This is not the 1970s, 1980s. Anyone can come into information now and they all want to preach about oh well you, no one else has journalistic standards what the fuck journalistic standards do you have when you include zero evidence zero factual anything in your article 
where all you're doing is trying to spin this ridiculous narrative talking about Evan Rachel Wood is getting the same treatment as Amber Heard. Well, when you fake an FBI letter and you've got somebody from your team who admits that they lied about everything already and they felt pressured by you to make the statements against someone, you got problems. So now you're trying to spin this crap even more. What kind of journalistic integrity is that? It's horseshit. And trying to say that people who make YouTube videos or write sub stacks or whatever the hell it may be as a way to make some money are grifting. Oh my God, look at the number of fucking ads on this shit, which Laura rightfully called out. Look at this. Look at all the ads on here. So how much were you paid for this article? How much ad revenue do you anticipate to generate? Did you watch the trial, read the documents and orders? We did. Yeah, damn right. We did. We are so much more informed on this situation than so many people trying to write about it. And the fact that people try to shame for it, it's the most, it's the stupidest argument I've ever seen in my life. Well, who, why? Oh, well, you should do better. Why did you spend so much time researching that? Um, to be informed, it was a topic that people felt like being informed about. That is like saying, oh my God, you studied way more than I did for that test. Nerd, you shouldn't have studied so much. What the fuck? What are you talking about? Trying to shame people because they are more informed on a certain topic than you are is the stupidest thing I have ever heard in my life. Instead of just admitting you don't know, take the L and shut the fuck up and learn something ridiculous. Anyways, look at all these freaking ads on this shit. Oh, I forgot. You're just writing these articles out of the goodness of your heart and publishing for free. <laughs> and she said this article with all the screenshots of the ads beneath. Amazing. Amazing. This article really got under my skin. Look here, Laura just went on a tear through this shit. Do you even know what the unanimous verdict was? All three counts. Exactly. How about Chief Judge Penny as Grate refused to set aside the verdict she believed to be just and right based on all that both sides presented? Boom. A hundred percent. Amber Heard's insurance paid for her legal defense. Amber Heard withdrew her doomed appeal, even though it wasn't costing her a dime. And speaking of doomed appeal, I'm going to get there next with these new unsealed documents. Amber Heard filed Four litigation claims hoping to shut Johnny up. She locked him into an NDA so he couldn't debunk her public claims. And yes, let us not forget that she freaking went after him after the UK article, after the an article he did in U UKGQ, Jesus, um, talking about that he was innocent and it was the first time that he really like deflected her claims in a public way, she went after him for arbitration on that article long before he ever sued her. People need to not forget that. Yep. And it was dismissed, dismissed rightfully so, but she's the first one to start legal bullshittery. Anyways, I got heated over this and, um, I responded to Laura too. First of all, this article brought to you by Penske Media and Saudi Arabia's Sovereign Wealth Fund. And then I also had to, you know, I just had to get in here. I don't take on trolls too often anymore. But if you fake an FBI letter, because she's talking about Evan Rachel Wood as well. On one hand and on the other hand, submit photos like this claiming they show gruesome feature altering injuries. People just ain't going to believe your nonsense. And... On that note, this would be the perfect segue into the new leaked, unsealed, whatever you want to call it, documents. So the docs are, you know, to be honest, I really don't know exactly where they came from. People are saying that they're originating with her stands on the other side. If that's the case, what a just moronic thing to do. But hey, par for the course. Um, none of this helps at all. All this yelling and screaming that she did about all my therapist notes should have come in. Well, here they are. Um, not helpful at all. A lot of them reveal that she didn't start speaking to certain people until 
2019, well after Johnny sued um, and a lot of other stuff. And sort of it does show how her stories started to take shape over time after he sued her. So yeah, none of this um, looks good for her, but there are a couple of them that are just kind of funny because they unravel her. So here are some from Cowan. So Mr. Cowan, I want to focus on something you testified earlier. You recall there was an incident in Australia. Uh, Johnny cut his finger. Yes testified as part of that incident you understood miss heard had thrown bottles is that right i know there was a bottle and it was thrown and broken i don't know who threw it uh was it your understanding mr jeff's injury was as a result of the thrown bottle as i recall that's how he cut his finger i mean you know <laughs> how is this helpful I mean, he is giving amber's description vague there was some dispute which was not uncommon uh, he had been drinking. There was some bottle thrown. I don't know who throw who threw it, but Johnny cut his finger. I mean, you know. So the testimony that you gave is you did not see any injury on her on December seventeenth, dude. The tweet that I just showed that I made the first picture, if you don't recall, is the December fifteenth allegation of headbutting, hair pulling up and down the stairs on some Fred Flintstone shit. Uh, all that split lip, two black eyes, broken nose, blah, 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 blah. He sees her on December 17th. Testimony you gave, you did not see any sign of injury of her on December 17th at this particular meeting with her face-to-face -face meeting. That is correct. And in fact, you saw her for an hour and a half. Yes. And you did not see any indication of black eyes on the 17th. That is true. You do not see any indication of a broken nose. That is true. You do not see any indication of physical injury at all. That's correct. Dude. And you never saw her with black eyes. Is that correct? No, I did not. Again, I did not. You never saw her with any kind of facial bruising. Is that correct? That's correct. You never saw her with a broken nose. That's correct. In fact, during the whole course of your treatment of her, you never saw any signs of physical abuse. That is correct. There's another part of this uh, where he goes on to say uh, that once Amber filed for divorce, um, he thought that it was great because she would be, uh, you know, like emotionally better to be away from him. Of course, he's only got her side of things to go on. But he says that he never feared for her physical safety. He very carefully delineates what he means by what he's saying, that he never feared for her physical safety he just thought that she would be emotionally better off to be away from him so yeah and this is somebody who she spoke to throughout the relationship so if you want to go read all of this stuff you can head on over to the jd case on instagram this link here is the google drive link to all of the documents and i will include it in the description below of course but you can see everything here that I was just going over. Lots of little tidbits that are interesting. If you're still into seeing what happened at the trial and all that kind of junk. Uh, it seems that people still are because I made a short video reel, whatever you want to call it, on this a couple nights ago. And it went gangbusters. So um obviously people are still very interested in trial material court stuff between these two so there it is a whole whole bunch more stuff for you to read here is what the google drive looks like tons of stuff tons of stuff i mean there's just you know days and days of things to read in here if you want so there it is enjoy yeah, guys, I think that's going to be it for today. Just wanted to jump on, say my piece about a bunch of stuff. Uh, I hope that everyone's having a fabulous week. It is raining here once again. So what better time to jump on and make a video than in the midst of boredom with the weather. But have a wonderful Tuesday, everyone. Thank you all very much for watching the video, for joining me. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Please like, subscribe, comment all of that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.